So I'll, um, I don't think much time to do this. I thought uh, the presentation is really just to kind of introduce uh, the new project that's taking place uh, in the Centre for Sports Engineering Research. And it's, it's called the Alliance for Sports Engineering Education. Um, and it's an Erasmus Plus project um, that uh, is led by TU Delft in, in the Netherlands and it's a network development grant. So the, the purpose of this uh, grant is to really kind of build uh, networks, develop education uh, within the European Union. I say that with, uh, you know, obviously uh, aware of the uh, situation, but it's, um, it's, it's going to be a three year long project. And I just want to talk about what the aims of that project are, who's involved and, and what kind of activities we'll be doing. Um, and I think, you know, let's save some time for the discussion at the end. So uh, this is straight from the, the, um, the application of the project. But basically, uh, the background is that we have a, um, a sports engineering conference every two years or so, and um, a number of uh, universities from there uh, met at this conference, uh, Hallam included, and realized that actually there's quite a lot of sports engineering courses within Europe. Um, there's a lot, a lot of activity that goes on, and also a, a good industry presence, industry association between many of those, uh, those courses. For example, we have a, a master's course in sports engineering, and as part of that, you, you do a, an industry-linked project. So it would be a research project that's driven with a research question from, from a company. And uh, the universities got together and realized that actually there's, there's a real potential to, to, um, to align some of these activities and develop uh, the education offer within Europe based on, on uh, these, these commonalities. And, and part of this is as well, and I don't know whether there are any parallels in, in other disciplines in the room as well, is there's a big thing with sports engineering, is uh, first of all, not many people know what it is. So, uh, you know, the majority of my family and friends still think I'm a sports scientist. Um, and also, uh, it's very difficult for people within the sports engineering community to define what sports engineering is as well, and whether actually it should be defined at all. Um, and I, I'm of the one of those that actually think that it should re remain a kind of transient subject that evolves as sport evolves. So, for example, uh, when I started doing this, uh, sport engineering was very much impact-based, it was very much mechanical engineering, but now the work, the work that I work on is much more likely to be towards a computer science, computer engineering, and uh, data science, dealing with data. And that reflects how sport has evolved in that, in that time as well. And I think to, to kind of rigidly uh, house this would, might be a, a bad idea. So who, who's involved in the project? So there are academic partners and there are commercial partners. Uh, TU Delft in the Netherlands uh, is the lead, lead partner. Um, they're, a, they're a technical university, uh, that's what the TU stands for, um, in a, quite a small town in, in the Netherlands, but they are really are truly world-leading uh, university. If you've never been, I encourage you to have the opportunity to go. It's, it really is a fantastic place. Um, in a fantastic town as well. Obviously, Hallam, uh, no need to uh, mention you know, how fantastic they are. Uh, Chemnitz University, kind of, um, they're uh, in the eastern part of Germany, uh, very much down the applied sciences route, very similar in their ilk to, to Hallam in that, in that respect. Um, it, the same with uh, the Vienna uh, University, uh, Technical University in Vienna, and also Arbor University is based in Denmark. And all of these uh, universities teach sports engineering or sports technology to, to, to some extent. And so there's opportunity for, um, for collaboration. And then the, the companies, so there are lots of second tier companies, but these are the ones actually named as part of the grant and can take part directly in the activities. Okay, so uh, Lava Sport, uh, Marcus talked about uh, Lava Sport and the activities they do. And now uh, led by David James in the UK, who actually uh, was the one who initiated this grant and this bid in the first place. Um, EPSI, who actually, they're a European platform for sport innovation, so they're not a, a company as such, but they facilitate discussion between sports companies, uh, projects, innovation projects, how they can take place together. So if two companies have a similar problem, is there a way of collaborating? And they have kind of brokerage events each year where people come and say, I'd like to work on this. And people kind of bid and take part and, and uh, kind of 
kind of get involved in, in working together with each other. So it's really good to have them uh, involved. Regora, if any of you are a mountain bikers, cyclists, you, you're probably aware of Regora. They do um, brake systems and, and they did do suspension for a while for, for cyclists. Uh, board Ape make a, uh, oh no, it's called, it's, um, if anyone knows German, it's VD, in, uh, is the name, the initials of the founder. So the, the guy who's working there uh, illustrated how he's pronouncing it incorrectly. Um, and I haven't been helped because I can't remember how it was. But they do, they do camping, outdoor quick kids, equipment like that. Catapult, of course, we know who they are uh, from, from Marcus' presentation, do uh, tracking systems for sport and uh, performance monitoring. Motec, actually, uh, we may have some Motec equipment in the department. They make uh, uh, equipment for uh, monitoring medical systems, but they also do treadmills, physiological systems, and equipment, and things like this. And then the International Tennis Federation, finally, are an organization that have a big technical um, component to it, and it's all about the governance of tennis, uh, but looking from a technical perspective, how they can be ahead of the game, uh, maintain the, um, the nature of tennis and the sport itself through kind of the uh, technical monitoring. And one of the reasons that this bid was successful is because we didn't only have uh, commercial companies involved, but we had federations and um, kind of broader platforms as well that were involved. Okay, so uh, I, I recently went to the Netherlands uh, two weeks ago and to have the kickoff meeting. So this is where all the partners kind of uh, really it was two days and the best way to describe it was a kind of uh, slow realization from everyone involved just how much work we have to do over the next three years. Um, and, um, but it was it's a good way of kind of uh, talking about actually what, what do we need to get done uh, in this time and what opportunities are there for the staff involved. And that's really what I wanted to talk about uh, next. And I didn't quite get this uh, uh, far when I was putting my slides together very hurriedly before this. Um, but the, re the, the whole point of this grant, the whole thing that's going to take place over three years, is there are, there are work packages okay, that will facilitate the, kind of, uh, the objectives of the, of the grant, which are to kind of bring companies and universities together. Okay? And so the things we're going to be doing, which I think are probably re more relevant to, to people in the room, is we have three different areas. So joint learning activities. So these are things like um, uh, winter and summer schools. So th uh, getting groups of, of students from each university to come together in one place uh, and run uh, research projects, for example. So one of the joint learning activities is um, a kind of international collaboration event. Uh, it's industrial collaboration event, sorry, it's called. It will be hosted by a company. They will bring their problems to a site. So really what this uh, will be is uh, the likely uh, way this will manifest is you go to a mountain in the winter, uh, you, you have a company that's involved some, some way in kind of snow sport activities, and you have two weeks to uh, capture data, do a research project around things that are relevant to the, to the company. Um, and that will be uh, groups working, students working across all of the different academic partners and of course the, the company as well bringing down those live research questions to it. So it's actually a really nice opportunity uh, we're thinking about how we will work this in with our own uh, existing um, uh, master's programme and this actually could be for example the data collection of the industrial project. So some of the projects that the students do are, um, are related to uh, this company and their data collection will take place at a prescribed time in uh, or somewhere like nice. Uh, oh, uh, and there are other things as well around uh, innovation. Marketplace is another one where a company uh, will provide a, um, a product or something that needs des designing, a challenge that it have within the industry. Um, the different university teams will look to create an innovation that, that answers that, that need, and then they will. Um, present that innovation to each other, the students, but also to a kind of a, a, a commercial panel which will be formed from academic partners and from the business itself. And the idea there is that the students are exposed to kind of real um, uh, commercial problems, but also the need to kind of sell your idea commercially on a, on a commercial platform. 
um, and I can go into more detail about that if, if need be. Open online courses is probably, uh, you know, this really is kind of relevant to some of the things that are happening within the uh, higher education space at the minute. So this is to create online uh, content, so around sports engineering, uh, a syllabus that goes from kind of, let's say, uh, pre-university, so maybe kind of A-level, standard, all the way up to professional level. And it will be to, cre to create content that is accessible by uh, any of those uh, members who can either bring them into sports engineering as a degree, or if they're in a, in a company that needs sports engineering, to give them some kind of background in, in some of the skills and things that, that maybe are required because the companies haven't recruited uh, perhaps the specific skills that they need, but they, there are resources available to help them access that. And then finally, innovation fellowships. So this is going to be a, um, uh, these are going to be cross collaborations between industry to academia and academia to industry where you can spend up to two months uh, in one of the sites. So an academic could visit a company for two months um, to teach the company about the way they do things, but also really to learn from the company um, and learn from the way that they practice sports engineering, the, the, the real challenges that, that you know, Catapult or Magora or any of those guys have in reality. And the idea is that when they come back into academia, they can then better inform their students, they can develop uh, better content that will, that will prepare those students more effectively for the, for the workplace. So, um, yeah, we've got uh, three years. I, I of course, going to have uh, a slide on here as well about what the associated challenges are with this. And I think some of the challenges um, around this are going to be, um, there's going to be some logistics about how we, how we do this, but the main thing we've been thinking about is, is how we fit these kind of things into our existing pattern of working. So, how we fit them into the master's course. So we've tried to design these activities, for example, so they can slot into existing modules. So we, we, you know, we only have to make slight changes, slight tweaks. Uh, using the open online courses, for example, this is effectively we're going to get funded to develop, to develop some really innovative and, and good content for our own courses and for our own students as well. So um, um, what we want to do is, is use this not only to uh, develop a network within Europe as well, but also to kind of give our, our own course and our own content a boost as well. Um, yeah, sorry, that's a little bit rushed, um, but I think uh, it'd be good to kind of move on to if anybody has any questions about uh, the huge amount of detail that I didn't cover in this presentation. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Um, re really nice example that we the aspiration from the VC downwards is for SHU to become the world's leading applied university. Patches like this are innovative, they, you know, really broad, you know, and there's a number of people already involved in knowledge transfer partnerships within the big UK, but this, this is that, and then so, you know, the, the variety of stuff that's involved, I think. Commercial partners, the online learning, uh, I'm sat, <coughs> I'm sure if a number of colleagues are thinking, all right, how do we get that version? I know there's psychology forums, and, and physiology groups, but you know that that's a, a world leading thing, not just European. So very exciting. So um, I'm, I'm guessing some of the questions were how do we get involved in that? Um, but other questions from you guys please. From a student perspective, I think it's fantastic that as professors you're gonna start integrating and create this mass global community. I think that's fantastic. But mm -hmm. what if any is the game plan to get student feedback and we're incorporating more global network at the student level so we can learn about more about our peers and start creating our own professional network from like a, a grassroots level. Yeah, um, that is, that's a good question. In, in, terms of, in terms of creating a community of sports engineering students around the world or something like that, is that, is that what you're, kind of, yeah, what you're getting at? Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I think, I'm, I'm hoping that these kind of things will, will kind of develop themselves anyway I think I, I don't I hope I'm not dodging the question uh, here but the uh, recently when we held a seminar day um, with uh, you know the ISA seminar day which did you attend yeah, yeah it, I thought that was a really good example of how you know when you start to have these these networks 
So for example, our own small network, which is really the, the master's course, mm -hmm. uh, there we have presenting uh, alumni from, from years gone by who are now working in industry. Um, we have, uh, you know, we have LinkedIn networks that have all our alumni now from, from 10 years past. Um, and they then go into companies who then create projects so our current students can do it, and then they go in, in that this virtuous circle. And for me, kind of as someone who's taught on the master's course since the beginning, it was really nice to see how those things develop over time as you've got it. Uh, you know, suddenly it's students you haven't seen for, for maybe seven years or something, seeing what they're doing now and, and seeing how they're um, virtuously feeding back into, into the students that are coming through. I'm hoping that by developing a wider network, okay, so it's only European, but I'm hoping that maybe this will give it, a, you know, a, a bit of an amplification. So it's not just within our own Sheffield community that that's happening, but it's, it's across the European community as well. And you know, in the future, maybe we can kind of get that to be truly, truly international, you know, across the Atlantic as well. Uh, but yeah, I hope that was. Not yeah, I think dodgy. especially just from our perspective, it's obviously I know everyone's like really busy, but the more influence you can have, because especially. If this program is only one week long. Yes. Um, the masters, it's you know really well created so that we're getting the most out of it. But this mm -hmm. one year, I think, um, especially moving forward, so we do have this established network within our organization, but um, combining that a little bit more internationally, so if we can start out with students, I think eventually, obviously, it'll create itself. But if there is a plan to start integrating or getting more student feedback, to start incorporating it into what your practices are between professors, I think. Sure. That's not planned at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that kind of thing should should be going on already as part of the course. But um, I mean, certainly something we do um, do every year to try and improve the you know improve the course every year based on some of the feedback that you guys give us. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, I think maybe that can happen as well once you've left the course. You know, things you learn in the future. Do we have the projects? I was just looking at the Erasmus Plus program um, and, and the link to the, um, the Knowledge Alliance and Portia Exposure this year, mm -hmm. show. but I think part of our own curious, but maybe also for the students in the room as well, it'd be interesting to know how long has this taken to actually get this going, because yep. in looking at this, this funding, you have to have a minimum of six partners mm -hmm. and from three different program countries. So actually developing those relationships, having those conversations, those Zoom and Skype meetings. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's a hard, hard question to answer that, James, because yeah. you could say it started in, you know, 1992 when Steve, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, decided to start studying sports. Well, some you know, someone thought, why don't we apply for the Erasmus Plus? Yeah, yeah, so um, we, uh, so Dave James uh, kind of kicked this off, I think, in 2000, and I did mention 16 or 17 um, at a so it would have been the 16 conference was in Delft and he started the conversation. But of course, he started with a conversation with with people that effectively are kind of um, you know already quite close collaborators. You see them every two years at the conference. We've we've done some projects with Delft. Uh, Dave had a, a visiting professorship there and things like that. So these relationships, I think, were already pretty. Um, well established. The one thing that's, that's happened as a result of that is I'd say that those strong links were probably only there between maybe two or three of us, but then you can have some kind of secondary and tertiary links that come from that. So I think having a, re a small but very, very strong core of people is, is really essential. How long that takes, you know, it, yeah, anything from five to ten years maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> so the, the, by the sounds of it, there is that organic stuff, there's the networking, the, there's you know, there's the, the formal writing by the sounds of it. Sorry, yeah, 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 in, yeah, in terms of the, yeah, the, the, the bid, so the first bid was submitted in 2018, that got rejected, um, and then they were keen to um, to resubmit, and so uh, by that time David would left the lab sport, so I kind of took that on uh, from the Hallam perspective and we rewrote it. And that second bid was successful. So the relationship building, you know, how long's a piece of string? The bid itself, probably three years. So once we got rid of David James, it was successful. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the private sector. So thank you for that. So um, just one quick question. Yeah. I might have missed it, but how much funding did you manage to get? So it's, it's just, just under a million pounds in yeah. total between all the partners. 
happened in the last few years but I think the, the messages we've had from the intelligence we have is it's worth still looking at European funding because the UK is in the centre of that Norway benefits from Horizon 2020 and they're not in the European Union so you know and, and when you think 10 of the 10 top I think Matthew said Paul 10 top U uh, universities in Europe four of them are in the UK the next nearest one in the top 50 in the European Union is down to 57. So, you know, we, we still have a strong place within that European research world, so it is worth still pushing to be active in, in research funding for Europe, to, you know, Erasmus, Trump, etc. So the message is, you know, we will still invest in European collaboration and science for this reason, you know, it's, it's meaningful. Can I just say thanks to both? Um, so that's one group question, on, Jim. Um, is there opportunity within this to actually bring in other, other organisations who are interested to be mm -hmm. yeah. associated with it or join, uh, maybe join? Yeah, the so there's a second, the second tier of partners, which there's 20 odd already in there who have committed to, to being part of this. So, for example, the Innovation Fellowships and things like that, people coming in to, um, the, to the university or vice versa. They could, they could take part in, in that way as well. But also, so they identified already then that second tier. Yeah, yeah. They, they, the only thing is they, they're not able to kind of claim uh, part of the, the, the kind of money is, is fixed, if you like, but they can take part in the activity as a good thing. So, thanks again uh, for engaging. Thank you both for your presentations. Really helpful. Um, we'll be available on YouTube and all the other platforms. <laughs> Thanks very much, Ariel. Thank